My name is Andy Brown. I'm from the Actors Group and I'm joined uh, this afternoon now by Carl Swan from Ram Pumps. Now, uh, Ram Pumps have been in business for 40 years, manufacturing a range of pumps um, in, in oil and gas, industrial, food processing and pharma. Um, joined obviously by Carl now. Carl's a general manager and he's kindly agreed to give up a little bit of his spare time to, well, you probably don't have any spare time to be fair, Carl, but agreed to give up a bit of time uh, to give us an insight into how they've adopted and changed uh, with the current situation that we're all going through. So uh, I guess, Carl, over to you, you know, broadly speaking, you know, we're all in this current situation now. It's it's a, uh, uh, the word unprecedented has been used quite a lot. Uh, and we're all, you know, reacting in different ways, uh, businesses are adapting in different ways. So how are you finding business? Are you, is your business up? Is your business down? Are you, are you, you know, how are you coping with things at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it's present a few challenges. Um, Globally, the business is up, um, more on the capital side, large capital equipment. I mean, we had a, a record year in March, uh, sorry, record, record month in March, right. um, biggest month since the company started uh, for ordering taken a single month. Um, and ultimately, you know, it's, uh, it's been not a bad outlook for us. There's been a little drop off on, on spares and refurbs, uh, the general day to day stuff. Um, Inquiry wise, that, that's dropped off a little bit, but I think that's more uh, the industry settling around the situation. Yeah. Um, that was a great you're still finding those CapEx projects? Yeah, I mean, we, we're always on a target for a big year this year anyway. Um, the, the project release, most of our work being Middle East, um, the project release has always been uh, earmarked to be quite a, a, a sizable upscale this, this year. Um, and that's going to continue into next year. I mean, I would look at the moment we're we're pretty much stacked out now to the middle of next year. Okay. Uh, and that's all success within the last three or four months. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, and, you know, I suppose thinking about the business and your business, how have things changed from a working practice point of view, from an atmosphere point of view, uh, in terms of team morale, team spirit, etc.? Are people uh, still engaged with the business? Are you still are you finding that hard to uh, keep the morale up? Or has everyone, you know, got that fighting spirit in them? I think the, the, the one benefit we have is we've always maintained that feeling of a family business, although obviously as part of the corporation we're, we're quite a large presence internationally. Um, we still have that very personal touch here, so when the situation changed um, we made an initial assessment on the staff that were here. Uh, we had a couple on um, more the critical spectrum, um, some with young families, there was a lot of uncertainty. So we took the initial steps to uh, to isolate those members of staff, get them working from home as quickly as possible. Um, we run alternate shifts internally here in the office in the initial stages. Um, and we have the one saving grace that our shop floor is quite sizable, considering the amount of personnel we have here. We have a lot of space. Um, we need that, obviously, with some of the large scale projects we're doing high volume. Um, so keeping the production staff segregated and working independently. They're used to working in that way anyway. Um, so that, okay. that, that was a, wasn't much of a cultural change for them. But yeah, the, the initial stages, it was, a, it was a nervous time, I'd say, at the, at the beginning. There was a lot of uncertainty, as I say, and it's, it, we've never seen anything like this uh, historically. Um, so most of the demand on me was on reassurance to the staff. Let, let, let's get them home, let's get them in a safe environment, let's get them working as best they can um, and then obviously follow the second round of, of notification by the government we, we put everybody non essential working from home um, with just the production staff myself and finance uh, attending on a daily basis just to make sure the operation is still maintained uh, okay. also the customers, you know. so, so so where possible working from home I mean have you changed working practices in the factory at all has, has there been any sort of layout changes at all or? It's not so much layout change, it's more how the production has been loaded. So our production manager has spent a lot of, of, of his personal time, unfortunately, um, ensuring that the, the production can continue in a safe manner. So whereas we would normally doing joint operations or two-man operations, we've had to postpone those operations in the interim. Um, there's some working within the independent cells anyway, um, but we, we are just, again, making good use of equipment, so um, manual manipulation equipment, lifting equipment, it's all solely operated anyway. Um, 
I said we're very fortunate in how we've laid our shop floor out here because um, in order to improve productivity and efficiency in previous years we've looked at um, overhead gantry cranes that are all electronically controlled and operated. We've got um, lifting fixtures and tooling which allow for single operator assembly and, and testing. Um, I'll say one of the biggest changes we have done is um, remote testing. So the, okay. the, 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 the live data acquisition test facility we have here which monitors all um, duty aspects of, of the pumps and packages when uh, final testing. Um, Many so that normally have been done on site, would it? And that's now been done remotely. No, it's, it's done on site, but the, the witnessing and the, the sign off by the customer has always been done in person. So we have a number of third party inspectors or customers will land on us for one day to three or four weeks. Um, obviously, that's not an opportunity we can do now. So we've, we've set up a new system um, where the customer can actually sign into the testing, witness the full testing data acquisition on the screen and visually see the test, make test demands while they want to use it in operation. So if they want to see anything specific or uh, they want a closer visual of, of one part of the test, the operator can take a, the mobile camera to, to the test rig and actually show the customer down there. Okay, you know, good good use of technology to capture the same result, I guess, but, you yeah. know. I mean, that would probably be the biggest change we've made to the, to the shop floor operation at this time. And it has been a critical demand because Customers need to see the validation, and it's the, the closest thing we can do to, to actual witness testing is uh, to give them live data at the time, and everything's calibrated. So everything we use is calibrated back to the PC, so they know 100% yeah. product is as they as they desire it to be. And I guess you know some of the other things that we've heard is, you know, making sure that there's you know I think you mentioned shifts before, but use of you know, hand gels and you know PPE and that kind of stuff. Are you, are you, is that has that really been an issue for you, or are you just are you managing to keep distances? Yeah, I mean, we've all got the uh, the hand gel on the desk. <laughs> um, we bought a, a sizable stack of that enough to cover uh, for okay. three months, and we we're just keeping that routinely uh, stocked up. Um, where we have um, common use inspection equipment, we have a clean down before and after use as well, just to, just to safeguard the operators. Um, they have. Um, disposable hand gloves if they need them um, for certain operations where there, there may be some unsurety. But so where the way we have the um, both the assembly and the machine centres uh, segregated, they are independent working within their individual cells. So they have their own um, consignment toolkits that we provide as a company anyway. Um, they're responsible for that toolkit. That's been a, in, in force now for many years. Um, so they're responsible to clean their own tooling down at the beginning and the end of each day. Um, the, the facilities team that come in and clean every day, we have them on an early shift, so they actually come in before the operators and before the staff arrive. And have, you, have you had any uh, any of your staff fall, fall victim to, to COVID-19 at all, or have you been lucky enough not to have? Touch wood, um, we haven't. Um, we, we've been very fortunate. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, I, I know some, obviously, having quite a large network, I know that a lot of people who, who have had issues. Um, right. They, um, yeah, it's, it's not been as great as it could have been. Um, but yeah, we, we do consider ourselves very fortunate. We're trying to give the message that, you know, the facility is a safe space. Yeah, 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 of course. Just have the staff right at the beginning. Uh, we will do everything we can as a company to keep this space as safe as possible. And yeah. you guys are responsible to keep your own personal homes and yourselves as safe as possible. Common feedback from a lot of our customers, I think, as, as a nation, you know, we're all in this together. But you know, as a, on a, on the whole, I think everyone's been very sensible, very practical about about the changes that have been made, um, which is which is great, really. So the other thing I was I was wondering is, have you have you had um, have you been impacted by the supply chain at all? So you know, your suppliers. Um, being able to get materials in, or you know, has that been a challenge for you? Or is that is the supply chain still open? And we've had very open communication. We've had a couple of, of it's more of the larger um, suppliers, um, okay. the industry leaders. I won't obviously mentioning names, um, where we have global manufacturing um, and global sourcing. They have been a little bit more troublesome, but but not to the effect people may. You know, if we're talking one or two weeks delay. Right, right. Um, we're, we're lucky on the material side because we obviously own the pattern equipment and the, the design, we are the design authority for the equipment. So all of our castings are manufactured as, as bespoke, specifically for order. Uh -huh. um, and we hold residual stocks of the key 
um, materials that we need. Okay, so right. So we haven't seen much of an impact. What we have had to do, obviously, is, is for foresee um, future order intake and just make sure we're covered for that. Um, okay, so, so again, making sure you've got the right material in stock to cover you for a, for a period, essentially. Exactly. Um, and as I said, we have foresight. We, most of our capital projects are three to six months in creation anyway, um, before we even begin manufacturing. Uh, by the time we do the design validation, um, customer approval, design work, and documentation approval, we could be three to six months before we're ready to cut the tube anyway. So we have that, that saving grace period. And what about from you mentioned productivity before? As productivity as a business, um, if you know, sounds like you, you're really busy. Is productivity, you know, in, increased essentially, or you know, are you suffering from a productivity dip at all? I think it's it's more about where you draw value from. Um, I wouldn't put it as a as a strict productivity figure um, as a as a key deliverable for us. We can measure productivity on how many hours we paid against how much labour has been absorbed. It, it won't give us a true picture. What we have okay. had, um, we can say, yes, we haven't been as, an effect, as effective um, in the remote working as, as we would have been if in the office. Um, but as a business, what we can draw on that is a lot of the experiences and a lot of the, um, uh, the benefits we can get from the team that are working remotely at the moment. Okay. Uh, there's been a lot of creativeness um, around problem solving, which is fantastic for us. Okay. Um, routine issues that we would get in the office or in the facility on a, on a weekly basis. When you're working remotely, it becomes a bigger issue. Um, and they've come up with fantastic suggestions, um, fantastic cost-saving benefits, uh, essentially, um, on how to resolve these issues. Um, and that's probably something we wouldn't have seen before. Um, okay, so a lot more creativity, a lot more... I think that's one of the unseen, you know, unforeseen benefits of, of, of this situation, isn't it? You know, and I guess working from home as well, you can do interactive calls with people working from home. Have they, have they, come, have they, have they sort of come forward and said, um, you know, they actually prefer some of the working from home? Would you say that people will go back to normal after this? Or would you, would you allow that working from home culture to pers persist? I think, yeah, I mean, the, fir the first thing obviously we've identified was there is a, a there is a, a varied skill gap across the across many departments on on the utilisation okay. of the IT. So I understanding see. of you know how it can benefit, um, and I think they're going to take a lot of that experience in the last sort of ten weeks, um, and that will drive a lot more uh, improvement moving forward. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's um, working remotely. So side, there, there is there's, there's benefits. I mean, I've worked remotely. You know, we have to travel internationally. I uh, have done for many years. You know, we could be working in Australia one week and in the Middle East the next week. Yeah. We used to work. You know, the, the critical demands of working from you know maintaining focus, maintaining a, a good connection with the office. Um, I think in the early stages it was uh, people started to feel a little bit isolated, which is why we've uh, we. We enjoy some of the regular meetings we've had, the project meeting we've in insisted has to stay at the same time, same day, everybody has to be connected through Teams. Um, and it, it, it's exactly the same it would be if it was in the office. You know, we, we have the same discussions, we get the business out of the way, and then we have a little bit of travelity at the end, and we all disperse. Uh, yeah. The only difference is half of them are dispersing downstairs for a cup of coffee, and the other half of us here are, are getting back to the job. And it's, you know, it's, it's a nice feel. It's, I don't think um, culturally as a business being so dedicated to the manufacturing side, I don't think it will ever become a routine allowance, but what we will have is confidence that if we have a uh, second revision or we want to explore flexible working or give um, you know, members of the team the opportunity to work from home, we have confidence that they'll be able to, they'll be able to service that requirement properly. Fantastic, that's, that's, uh, that's really insightful. One of the things I wanted to ask, real, I suppose, is what unexpected benefits have, have you have you seen? But I guess you've just kind of took us through some of those examples already. Is there anything else that you you know you can see as a, as an unexpected benefit? I would have to say tolerance. Okay. <laughs> um, I think again, we we all we all fall um, foul of, of you know getting into a set routine. We don't have the standard day to day, you know, we don't come in and perform the same task every day. So we're always quite flexible in how we work. But I would say 
tolerance and understanding is definitely something people are going to find. Uh, yeah. They can they could put it on their CV at the end of this. I reckon. Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had 12 weeks of lockdown. Um, one of our key uh, key deliverables is uh, yeah, we can we can overcome most issues. Man. Resilience, I think, rather than tolerance, I'll say resilience is probably better. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and again, maybe the confidence that if there is a second peak or if something comes along in, in, in a future that means you have to adopt and be more flexible, you've got that ability to do that now. You've, you've kind of proved it to yourselves and that the business is resilient. So um, would you have any, you know, for people who are watching this, you know, other customers or, you know, um, businesses that are interested in learning more about how, how, how people are coping with this situation? Have you got any advice that you'd like to share or you think, you know, businesses can learn from? We were, we were quite conscious at the start, especially the management team, not to, not to not overreact, but not to to follow what we've seen around us. There was a lot of people, you know, reactively closing down the doors, putting instant blockades in there, um, putting instant delays in. This, for us, had to be treated like any other uh, issue that we would face on a, on a normal basis. You know, we have to look at the risks, we have to look at the, the human impact yeah. uh, and the ongoing operation. We have a responsibility to service obviously critical customers, in the, especially in the pharmaceutical food process and the water industry. We have to be here. So regardless of, of what's going on around and the outside, we had to um, run the risk assessments and, and run the best practice we could uh, in order to keep going. Um, it would have been very simple for us to say, OK, you know, the liability on us is, is too great. We could just shut the doors down for two or three weeks and send everybody home. Yeah. And we'll pick it up again in two or three weeks. I'm, I'm glad we decided to go the way we did. Um, and that's literally take a little bit more care in what we're doing, make sure that the, the staff are well informed. Um, my major failing, I think, is just work over at the start. I didn't keep in contact with everybody as much as I would have liked to have done. Okay. Um, that caused a few frustrations in the early stages, you know, keeping those connections when you've got a, a, you know, a team of people that you've got to keep in contact with and the customer base is in demand as well. It, it becomes a joke in that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take, take a step back, read what's happening around you, make make good, sensible steps to protect, protect the staff um, and keep everyone well informed. I think that's, that's the only recommendations I can make. Communication, regular communication, yeah. Listen, Cal, thank you very much for taking time out of your day oh, to, to chat to us. That's been really insightful. Um, glad that the business is performing well. Glad that you've you found a rhythm, a, a new rhythm of working, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully things will continue to, to, to improve, and um, hopefully we'll get back to normal relatively soon. So, I'll see what normal looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks for your invite.